come back, I want to give uh, my example of how I get a fire started. See if it's something that might help you out. Come back. Patrick Midtown Outdoors. Before we get into this video, please hit that like, share, and subscribe button. There's still a bunch of you that watch the channel that are not subscribed, and we'd sure like to hit that 2,000 mark this year. So come on, hit that button, subscribe, hit the bell notification so that you'll know when Midtown Outdoors posts another video. Let's get into it. What's going on, everybody? This is Patrick Midtown Outdoors. How's my outdoor crew doing? I hope this video is finding you well. Um, I want to talk about first time camping. Um, so you decided to talk the family into going for your first fall camping trip or your first camping trip ever. And there's some things, you know, you want to build a fire, you want to have a nice campfire and everything for the kiddos to roast marshmallows and all that. Well, there's things you need to know before you do this. So let's, let's develop a little checklist here of the things we need to know first. And most important, are you in a burn ban? If you're in a burn ban, well, the campfire is kind of out for that. Second, if you're not in a burn ban, the one thing I want to impress upon you is using the fire rings provided or a developed or um, already established fire ring. Let's use that. Let's don't establish four or five fire rings within a campsite, especially if you're dispersed camping. Um, if there's already a fire ring built, use that. Don't try making your own. No, you know, we only need one spot. That's it. Okay, so the next thing we have to worry about is where we're setting up camp. You want your camp at least 15 feet away from where your fire is being burned. Um, I know back in the day in the scouts, we always said 10, but I'm noticing today they say 15 um, so go with that 15 mark uh, that would be a good distance and the reason why you want that 15 feet from the campfire is in case sparks or anything should fly through the air and well catch your tent on fire and it'd just be a bad weekend altogether you start that fire you put that fire out um, you start a campfire before you go to bed at night you make sure it's burn completely out. Uh, I know this can, <laughs> I know if it's, if it's a chilly night, it can suck because you're, you're having to douse what's keeping you warm, but douse it or cover it. Um, I have covered fires before and just let them roast themselves out, but you don't want a major flame still going when you go to bed because you can set the whole place on fire and uh, well, another bad day this is an important one is make sure the children understand they can get hurt around a campfire if you have kids with you young kids you know let them help you pick up the sticks and bring them but also tell them you know when you pick up that stick you bring it and put it by the pile you do not hit your brother or sister with it or mom or dad either or whatever your situation is um, but get them involved at an early age, but know their limits and they should know their limits also. And my final one I'm going to throw out there for this one. And if you have a suggestion or a comment you would like to leave, leave it down below. Um, this is, you know, I like to try to be a community that helps one another and your advice might help the next person, might help me out, maybe something I left out. But, uh, just know going into it, there are times you just can't get fires to go. I'm going to show you a way that I do build campfires. And 99.9% .9 of the time, I am have good success out of doing this method. Now, I'm not going to get you into the bushcraft stuff. There's a, numerous channels out there. I've done it before myself back in the day. But there are numerous channels that do bushcraft stuff. If you want to learn that stuff, that's great. You need that in your toolbox just in case. But what I'm going to show you here in a little bit is something that is pretty easy to get going. 
And the method I'm going to show you is the way I do it and I have success every time with it. Okay guys, so what I've got laid out is what I consider my main ingredients to get a good campfire going and going pretty quick. First thing I use is one of these Dewar Flame indoor outdoor logs. Uh, you can get whatever one you want to try. I have a lot of success out of these and have been using them for years now and I really like them. So you lay it like this where this seam is up here. Now this to me is the important part of getting this thing going successfully. Is you light here and here where the arrows show and let the packaging burn. Let it burn. Um, I recommend if you don't carry a lighter with you, I highly recommend these matches here, these Zippos. They're extremely long and have a long burn time to them. But I highly recommend them as far as starting your campfires with. So, you let this burn and get it established and get your fire going the way you want it. Now, here's what I like to do with my logs once this is burning and burning good, is I like to lay them like this. I'll put one on one end and I'll put one on another end. And the reason why I do it this way is this log and this log still has ventilation. So it's getting air through there and it's circulating that, that fire and helping it breathe. Um, the next thing I'll do is once I notice those logs are starting to burn is then I'll start laying my logs in a crisscross pattern so that we get a good full fledged burn over the whole thing and get a good warming fire. Um, there's been several mornings where I've gotten up on a, you know, a Saturday morning or Sunday morning and it's chilly out and everybody's going to be coming out of the tents in a little bit, get a fire going for them and, you know, four or five logs and you ought to be good. And I'm talking this size logs right here. That'll get you good and warmed up for the morning for your breakfast or whatever you're having, um, or getting camp torn down for going home. This, this won't burn that long. Um, even though this log says three hours, it's not going to burn very long. I don't know, you know, airy situation. It's, it's probably going to last about an hour and the whole thing probably last two hours at the most. Um, but a lot of times on the, on the morning times of go home, I won't even start a fire. Um, I'll do what I got to do to, you know, get everything torn down and get done and uh, get in the truck, get home. But this is just how I set up for a successful campfire. Now I've, I can tell you right now, I've done this for years this way and I've never had a problem. I will say this, I've used the Walmart log brand logs before. Uh, matter of fact, I have one of the sample little logs and that's the Pine Mountain little log. You can use these little logs too, or some of this other fire starting stuff that I have. I have one of the, um, what is this brand? Duraflame. Uh, the Duraflames work exceptionally well most of the time. Um, but you can do all kinds of things to get a fire going. This is how I get one going that I know I don't have time to mess around. Get that log burning and then start building my, my lay that's going to be, uh, the fire for the day or for the night. But uh, main thing is Sunday morning before you leave, make darn sure that, that fire is completely extinguished. Um, what I'll take do is before we leave, I have a bunch of water left over. Even if I don't have a bunch of water left over, I'll get more water and I will douse that fire until there's no smoke or steam rolling off of it. That's the main thing is no smoke or steam rolling off that fire, especially at night too. If you plan on going to bed and you don't want to, you know, have to worry about the fire. Well, when you put it out, make sure there's no smoke or steam rising up from it. Um, cold fire is a dead fire. So that means it's not going to amber up later and send, you know, start another fire up on you. But that's my suggestion of getting a good campfire going. Um, keep the kiddos and the family warm um, you will and I will say this too is another thing this is what they call heat treated wood um, that's the only kind of wood in here in the state of Tennessee and I do know for a fact 
U.S. Forestry Service and uh, national parks require you to use heat treated firewood. It has to be certified heat treated um, by the USDA for them to accept it into the parks. Now, yes, you can go find wood in the forest or whatever that's down, down, not living trees, but dead trees that are down. If they're still standing, you can bring them down if they're dead, but make sure they're dead before you bring them down. Also, and you can burn there the wood that you find around the campground with no problem, but do not take that wood home with you and then go to such and such state park or national forest the next week. That is reason why they want the heat treated wood because you're not bringing in any kind of diseased or bugs that's not native to that area. So that's why you never take wood out of a park and the only wood you bring into a park is heat treated. Cutting tools, make sure you keep them sheathed up, especially around the kiddos and yourself because adults get hurt just as bad by these things as the kids do. So make sure you have these things sheathed up. Uh, if you bring the electric chainsaw, make sure they don't know how to operate it or keep it put up when you're not using it. Um, so just kind of a safety thing to throw out there, but uh, always, always talk, carry the ax like this away from your body when you're walking um, and always keep the sheaf on it when you're walking too. And I know some people may not have a sheaf of theirs, but still if you carry it like this away from your body when you're walking, you're less likely to get hurt. All right, guys, that's it for this one. I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll make sure I answer them. I always hang out a few days after and sometimes I, I even still answer questions a couple of years after the videos come out. But uh, if you have any other questions, please ask down below. If there's anything I missed, put it down below for the community to see. And that's it for this one, guys. Be prepared. See you on the next one.